guys, Sweetie here and welcome back to another video. Today we're talking about how not to care for an axolotl. I'm going to be talking about what I think are some of the most important things that you should never do while owning axolotls. I have made quite a few videos on axolotl care before, so feel free to watch those as well. But there is a lot to learn when it comes to axolotls, which is why you should always do a lot of research on your animal, and why I'm here today to help you. <laughs> axolotls are fairly basic pets, you know. They aren't actually that hard to care for, but when you're first getting them, it does take a wee bit of effort to actually set up your tank, cycle your tank and all that stuff, but once you've got all that stuff done, they're pretty easy, but there is more to it than a lot of people do expect when it comes to axolotls. One of the biggest mistakes that I think a lot of people make is not cycling their tank before getting an axolotl. And I feel like not enough people talk about this sadly, but it is a very important step when you're getting an axolotl or any aquatic animal really. So cycling your water is the process of building beneficial bacteria in your aquarium. It can take weeks to months to do it, so it can be a bit of a long process and sometimes you have to have a tank with no axolotl in it for quite a while. Without cycling your tank first, you could risk your axolotl getting very sick or even passing away due to the poor water quality. And I see this excuse being thrown around a lot like don't axolotls live in really bad water conditions in the wild? They can live through that so why do I have to cycle the tank? Well first of all there isn't many axolotls left in the wild. They are extremely endangered because of poor water conditions. Second of all we're talking about captive bred axolotls here, not wild axolotls. Captive bred axolotls are very different to wild ones. You cannot put a captive axolotl into the wild environment they will die because they're not bred to be used to that environment. Captive bred axolotls have been bred for generations. They're used to living in good water quality conditions. So just because axolotls in the wild can possibly live in terrible water doesn't mean you should let your pet axolotl live in terrible water. That excuse just makes no sense to me and I suggest you don't get an axolotl if that's your thought process. So the fastest way I would recommend cycling your aquarium is finding someone who owns a cycled aquarium already and using some of their established media and put it in your tank. This will help give you a lot of beneficial bacteria in your aquarium and makes it a lot easier to do the cycling process and a lot faster. It's a good idea to join a few aquarium or axolotl groups that are in your like country or area, state, whatever, and you can ask around for some filter media and there's usually quite a few people who are willing to give you some for free to help boost your aquarium. There's a lot to learn when it comes to cycling so it's important you do a lot of research on that beforehand because it's quite a long process and I also highly recommend that you have a API master test kit on hand. I feel like this is kind of a must-have for any aquarium owner, especially if you're new to the hobby, because you need to test your water to make sure your parameters are safe for an axolotl to actually live in there. Some pet stores will test your water for free, but it's always kind of a lot easier just having one on hand all the time so you don't have to go to the pet store. You can also get water testing strips. I don't really recommend those. They're not really as accurate as actual a proper testing kit, so Go for the testing kit instead. If your axolotl is showing signs of stress, this could be due to having an uncycled aquarium or your cycle might have crashed. It's very common for axolotls to get ammonia burn in an uncycled aquarium, which basically makes their skin look red and sore, and it is very painful for them and very dangerous for them to be in ammonia-filled water. This is extremely common when you put an axolotl into an uncycled tank, the ammonia just becomes so high it literally burns their skin. Sometimes their slime coat can even peel off which could make it very easy for them to get infections. If their gill feathers are disappearing or they have no gill feathers, that is also a sign of poor water quality or just stress, as well as their gills being curled forward. Another thing, if your axolotl is constantly active, is a sign of stress of some sort. Axolotls are pretty chill animals, they don't really do a whole lot, they kind of just sit there. It's normal for them to be quite active at night, but if they're active all day during the day, something isn't right there. So if your axolotl is showing signs of stress, the first thing you should ever do is test your water. And if your water parameters are fine, then you can find out what the problem is from there. If you do have a sick axolotl or your aquarium cycle crashed, the best thing you can do is tub your axolotl. This means putting your axolotl in a shallow tub of water. This way you can change their water every day and also make sure you do add prime to that water which you should be adding to your normal aquarium anyway whenever you do a water change. You can also add Indian almond leaf which is always a good idea to have on hand when owning axolotls or any other fish because it does have natural healing properties and a lot of fish medications uh, can't actually be used on axolotls because they are so sensitive compared to fish so it's best to just use Indian almond leaf. Another common mistake is keeping axolotls with other animals. So the only animal that axolotls can be kept with is other axolotls. <laughs> they are not actually a social species, they are often found solitary in the wild, so you don't have to keep an axolotl with another axolotl. But yes, you can keep them with other axolotls as long as your tank is big enough. I'd recommend about a 40 gallon long tank for two axolotls, or at least a tank that's about 80 centimeters long because the longer the tank the better for axolotls. If you are keeping two axolotls together, it is important to make sure that they are the same size because if one axolotl is a lot smaller than the other, 
they will probably get eaten by the bigger axolotl. You cannot keep axolotls with fish or snails or anything like that. And I've actually made this mistake before. I keep my axolotls with minnows. I didn't have any problems with that. But after learning the risks involved, especially because minnows are actually unsafe for axolotls to eat as well, I did quickly separate them. The reason why you can't keep fish with axolotls is because fish can potentially nip their axolotls gills or tail or legs. Also fish create a lot of waste, especially if you're keeping them with like goldfish or something. Goldfish need quite powerful filters because they produce so much waste. But axolotls on the other hand can't have filters that have too much flow, so it'd be kind of hard to have a very powerful filter in a tank with two of those animals because they have very different requirements. Fish can also be a choking hazard for axolotls. They also struggle to digest bones as well. So there's just no benefit in doing it. I see a lot of people keeping them with snails too, which again is another choking hazard for axolotls. And also snails can actually damage axolotls slime coat because they can literally eat it off them. And snails just create so much waste. Like, I don't know why people call snails like tank cleaners because they're definitely not tank cleaners. They're more like tank messy <laughs> They just make your tank so messy, they don't stop pooping basically. So axolotls can have the occasional feeder fish as a treat, but the only fish you can feed them is live bearing fish. So guppies, platies, mollies, sometimes I'll feed my axolotl some guppies, but I only do that very occasionally. And you do have to remove the guppies or whatever it is um, if your axolotl doesn't eat them because you don't want them to hurt the axolotl. Another thing is that you cannot house axolotls on gravel or with any ornaments that are small enough to fit in your axolotl's mouth. I feel like I have to say this all the time because not enough people are aware of this. It's so often I see axolotls that have to go through surgery to remove gravel in them that they've impacted or if they're lucky they'll poop it out but often they can be unlucky and they'll die. Very easy for axolotls to accidentally ingest gravel and it's just not worth the risk at all. If you do want to have stones in your tank you need to make sure they're at least twice the size of your axolotl's head so they can't ingest them. A bare bottom tank is fine but soft silica sand is good too. You do have to also make sure that you don't use black sand because a lot of black sand has iron in it which is unsafe for axolotls. You can actually test this by putting a magnet through your sand and if the sand sticks to the magnet then it is unsafe. You can get safe black sand but you should definitely make sure there's no iron in it first because that is dangerous to axolotls as well. Another thing is that axolotls are cold water animals. This might be obvious for a lot of you guys that have already looked into owning axolotls but I've had people like in the comments be like, my axolotl's in a tank that goes to 30 degrees Celsius and they're fine. Congrats, you're killing your axolotl. Sorry, like, I understand people can make mistakes, but when people try to tell me that I'm wrong for, for saying that axolotls are cold water animals, boy. In the wild, axolotls live in a very cold lake in Mexico that does not get any higher than 20 degrees Celsius, which is 68 degrees Fahrenheit. So you cannot let your axolotl tank go any higher than 20 degrees Celsius. Sure, your axolotl might seem fine, you know, but um, axolotls can't communicate with us, so you don't really know that they're fine. And why not be 100% sure the axolotl is fine instead of just assuming, oh, it's fine, it doesn't look any different. What happens when an axolotl is in warm water is that their slime coat literally just like peels off which causes them to get fungal and bacteria infections very easy which can kill them. It's just not worth the risk at all. And you shouldn't have a heater in your tank even if you do live in a cold area. You don't need a heater in your tank because it's very easy for axolotls to get heater burn. But if you do live in a warm area the best thing you can do to keep your tank cool is to install fans above your aquarium which actually works really well. Like you can just use some cheap fans and just kind of find a way to install them above your tank and that actually works but on more extreme cases you will have to buy a chiller. Also probably a good idea to keep your axolotl on a low shelf because it is colder like the lower it is. Thankfully I live in quite a cold country so my tank's always at like a perfect temperature even during summer it doesn't get too hot but I know in a lot of countries that that's a lot harder to get that temperature to stay cool so if you don't you know have the supplies to install a fan above your tank or can't get a chiller because they are actually very expensive. Might be best to stick with a different animal that is a bit easier in your climate. Another thing is dietary needs. A lot of people believe that axolotls can just live in bloodworms their whole life. Don't know why people think this but this is quite a common like, assumption about axolotls. Um, the truth is that bloodworms should only be an occasional treat. They do not have enough nutritional value for your axolotl. Their main diet should be rapashi grub pie and earthworms. Bloodworms and like frozen brine shrimp can be a good treat for your axolotl though. You should never feed your axolotl mammal meat. I'm talking about beef, pork, chicken heart and stuff like that. A lot of people feed them to their axolotl but um, again 
Don't know why people do this. Axolotls don't eat mammal meat in the wild. Obviously, they, can't, they don't just grab a whole cow and, you know, munch on it. <laughs> They're not evolved to eat mammal meat, and feeding that to them is actually super harmful. It can actually cause kidney failure, obesity, and vitamin A toxicity. I remember when I got my first of Axolotls, I got them from someone else who wasn't caring for them the best way, and I was picking them up, I asked them what they fed them, and they said to me, oh yeah, we just feed them bits of steak and whatever meat we're cooking that night, and I'm like, Oh, so yeah, that is some things on what not to do when owning axolotls. Hopefully this video could help you. If you do have any questions about some of the things I talked about today, feel free to answer them in the comments and I might be able to answer them or someone else might be able to help you as well. Thank you for watching this video, guys. Let me know what else you like to see on my channel and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!